Hello YouTube, this is The Bucket here. Um, <clears throat> I'm coming at you today with a video that's going to be a little bit different than what my stated purpose uh, on YouTube is, which is to deal with primarily historical firearms or guns that are mechanically interesting. Um, I, I, you, utilizing this to kind of talk to you guys about my EDC or my everyday carry. And I think a lot of us in the gun community are very interested in what the purpose of our everyday carry is. So I, I currently have a job and my career is, a, is a, in education, which means that I can't carry at work. And so for the longest time, I did not carry. And I am a Christian and my pastor came to me after a shooting and said to me we are getting together a security team we want to get you guys some training and we would like you to uh, start to carry at church to protect uh, your fellow congregants and um, i wanted to be able to support my church and i went out and bought a firearm um, that my trainer had recommended to me it was the smith and wesson m p shield and i started to train a great deal and I realized after a short while that the ergonomics and just the geometry of a shield was not going to be good for me, primarily because I have a big old fat, meaty hands. I'm a big guy, uh, a little muffin top, uh, which meant that a super narrow gun was not going to be necessary for me. So I went around and I shopped and I tried out lots of different guns. I tried the Glock 26. I tried the Smith & Wesson m and Compact um, 1.0. I tried the uh, Fabrique National or FN, uh, FN9C. And I saw this online and I just took one look at it and kind of fell in love. And so I went ahead and purchased it sight unseen and I have never uh, looked back. This is the H&K VP9SK. And the SK stands for subcompact in German. And kind of the, the gun world has um, described subcompact pistols uh, this way. Uh, double stack, um, usually the magazine capacity is something right around 10, give or take one or two rounds. It's gonna be like I said, a double stack magazine, um, a shorter barrel and a shorter grip. And usually when you have a flush fit grip, you're gonna end up with not a full pinky grip. Uh, you can uh, go ahead and obviously get a full pinky grip with an extended magazine uh, such as this one. And um, that's kind of the uh, geometry of those types of firearms. Um, why did I stick with this firearm? Um, I use this firearm because this is the firearm I shoot the best. Uh, it is a great firearm. It, point, it points very, very naturally. Um, I like the finger grips. Uh, one of the neat things that this gun has, I'm not going to take out the whole box, but they have inter, uh, interchangeable back straps. So if you've got bigger hands, smaller hands, you can kind of um, adapt that as you see fit. They also have these side panels where they have large, uh, medium, and small. And how I have kind of um, decided that I like to, to carry is I like a, a small here on the right hand side where my hand goes and I like a large on this side so it kind of fills up my hand and my grip becomes much more natural um, and I find I just shoot this gun really really accurately uh, it is completely reliable um, it's trigger pull there's a little bit of take up and just very clean, crisp break. Um, the reset is uh, not not super short, but very clean. And then it is right back to that wall. And you can go ahead and, and pull that trigger and get just accurate shot after accurate shot. Um, the, the original gun that I got had <clears throat> these um, fluorescent which were not night sights, but if you hit them with a light, they would glow in the day or the night. Um, I ended up utilizing those, liking those. It was really easy to pick up targets for daylight shooting. A good buddy of mine has a gun range in his backyard and it made it very, very easy to pick up uh, those sights. Um, I really, seeing as though this is 
the gun that I keep in my home uh, for night uh, time safety. Um, I ended up getting a version with night sights. Those are usually called the law enforcement package, which will come with three magazines instead of two and um, will come with the night sights. Uh, that's kind of what comes with the gun. Uh, you get one of these with a pinky extension. You get one of these, which is flush fit, which is how I carry it. Uh, it you know, I like the way that the pinky grip feels, but I really enjoy carrying and practicing this way because this is how I'm going to carry it. It makes it a little bit more concealable, which I really, really appreciate. Uh, makes it very nice. I carry um, Remington green and white box. Uh, jacketed hollow points 115 grain uh, watch a lot of Paul Harrell videos and uh, I took away from that the bullet that you're gonna carry you need to shoot and as an educator I don't have uh, Hornady uh, critical defense uh, at the range time uh, practice uh, money so these are really nice they're affordable and the ballistics are good enough for what I need them to, to do uh, what's one of the digs on this gun is when you compare it to the Glock 26, when you compare it to the uh, uh, SIG subcompact, when you compare it to the Smith & Wesson, all the dimensions are a little bit bigger. A little bit longer, a little bit wider, a little bit uh, longer this way as well. And uh, the mag capacity is on par or a little bit less than a lot of those guns. And um, so that is something that a lot of people look at and say, yeah, I, don't, I just don't know if, you know, this is the gun for me. Uh, as far as, you know, concealability, you know, you could pick up a holster. This is the one that I picked up. Um, it does, it, it locks up real tight. I think I spent 30 bucks on some Amazon site or eBay site, and it's worked out perfectly for me. And it holds real tight. Uh, again, I'm a bigger guy, so the... Um, Conceal and carry, it, the conceal part isn't a struggle for me. Um, when I'm just walking around the mall or walking around the city, uh, I will carry it with just the 10 uh, plus one in the chamber. <clears throat> and because this gun is so darn accurate, uh, I know that those 10 bullets are going to go where I want them to go. And if I'm ever in a situation where I need more than 10 bullets, I have other options. Uh, so that's that's how I carry it just for everyday carry. Um, I don't put myself in positions where I'm going to need a lot of ammo. Now, as my pastor has asked me to be on the security team, uh, because I'm not just protecting myself, I'm protecting my entire congregation. They do make 15 round extended magazines, which feels great in the hand. Uh, one of the things that I wasn't a big fan of with the P365 is when you did these extensions, it kind of changed the grip angle, which meant you were going to have to hold the gun differently to, to utilize those mags, which meant you had to do a lot more training with it. Um, these, it just feels natural, just like it was with the 10 round mag. You can get them in 13 round mags. Actually, the 13 round mag um, is actually a little bit smaller than the pinky extension with just 10. So if you're gonna carry it this way, might as well just go pick up that 13 round mag and you're gonna end up with less of a profile and um, a three more round uh, mag capacity. So uh, I'll give you some anecdotal stuff. I've uh, taken a bunch of people to the range. Uh, when you when your buddies find out that you're a gun guy, they, they wanna to go to the gun range with you, whether they're um, just kind of a once a year type shooter or whether they're a regular shooter. And uh, I've had a couple of different friends that um, they weren't very good shots. And part of that was because maybe they didn't pick out the, the best gun for them. Maybe they have big hands like me and they, they picked up a, a single stack or a gun that's too narrow for them. Every single person that I have put this gun in their hand as, you know, kind of a novice shooter has improved dramatically. Uh, I'll give you an example. One of one of my good buddies, uh, he's a, a barbecue buddy. He came out with me, and he was really struggling. He had a, a really nice Smith and Wesson 1911, and he was just having a hard time hitting the steel. And I told him, I said, "Hey, bud, go ahead and give this gun a try." And on his ten rounds, I think he put six or seven on steel. And he looked over at me, he goes, "I want to get one of these guns." Um, I got a you know the Goat Whisperer out at our gun range. Um, he puts this in his hand and every single time he goes, man, I need to get one of these. Everybody that uh, puts one of these in their hands says they're great. 
what are the downsides? So uh, let's talk about uh, the top three that I have found out. First is cost. Uh, H&K is proud of their weapons. Uh, you are going to pay up for this gun. You can get a SIG, um, you can get a Glock for probably $100 to $150 cheaper. And again, when you start looking at those numbers on the page, it's uh, you know their their guns are going to be narrower. Theirs aren't going to be quite as long. Those theirs aren't going to be quite as tall. Um, you know, and, and and if you're just strictly looking at numbers on a page, you know this wouldn't this wouldn't warrant the money that you're going to pay. That being said, if you see one of these at your local gun range for the rental, spend the ten bucks, spend the fifteen bucks run this gun. You will love it. You will not regret it. So that's the first kind of downside to the VP9SK. Second, what a lot of people will say is um, the paddle holster. Um, we're um, Merca, Merca first, and your darn uh, push button mag release should be right here. And I will be honest with you, the 4th of July is coming up, and I would completely agree with you uh, that I thought that this was the worst possible thing that you could do. And then I got it, and I played with it, and I actually found out that this is actually one of the best upsides of this gun. Now, if you think to yourself that I have to operate my mag release with your, with your thumb, then you, this is going to be a problem for you. But what I've learned is... I don't operate it with my thumb. I operate it with this finger. And so when I actually grip it, you can see it through the trigger guard. I just push down, it comes right out. I can do that without changing my grip at all. Um, to be honest with you, if I could change all of my guns to have a paddle holster, I would. If, not paddle holster, pedal uh, mag release. They're, they're, they're just, they're, they're a better design. And I'm surprised they haven't taken on. Again, Murica. I get it. Um, people are used to what they're used to, but if you try it, <clears throat> go ahead, try this finger, just go ahead and hit that mag release like that. And you will, you will love it. It, it really works out great. So I'm not even going to count that as one of the three. A lot of people will tell you that that's a downside. I would uh, completely disagree with them. The next is, um, a, a real problem, uh, that you have to address. I, I get a really high purchase on my gun. I, I, I do two thumbs forward, and if you look right where that puts it is right there on that extremely flush uh, slide stop, slide release. Uh, I have had problems where the slide does not lock back on the last round because I'm riding that slide stop. Uh, that is something that you will need to train with. That is something that if you have this really high purchase on your, on your firearm, um, you are going to have some times when the slide does not, um, lock back. And so, you know, you can mitigate that, um, by just getting a, a slightly lower purchase on it. Or, uh, you can just kind of deal with the fact that there's going to be times that that that's not going to lock back. Um, now, what makes it great is, man, it doesn't take much to get that going. So when you do get that new mag in, you can flick that down. It's not, it's, it's, a lefty would consider this fully ambidextrous. This is a useful uh, and quality uh, slide release. It is different. It's not like you would change it out. Um, and actually, probably, um, if for a left-hander, you'd have less problems uh, with that particular issue, just, just due to how they designed the other side. Um, but it, this is a fully ambidextrous gun. Lefties, uh, come on and, and enjoy. The real downside to this gun, that, that, and it's not much of a downside, is when they designed this gun, they put these two wings um, to come off to help you rack your slide. And they're very functional. They do that job very well. Uh, the problem that you get into is um, if you're a full-figured fella like I am, if, when, when you put in your holster into your belt and then you put your gun in, that's just about the perfect amount of uh, space to get to pinch that muffin top. And uh, it does not feel good when you do it. Um, I have been carrying this gun for years now, and still to this day, I will clip some muffin top 
and it does not feel good. Uh, the problem that you get into on top of that is that how they designed this is you have to push out your rear sight and you could take each one of these plastic pieces out but then you end up with a gap they 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 don't it doesn't come with a spacer to fill in that gap uh i think that that's something that h and k probably should have done not to mention the fact i'm not a big fan of messing with my sights if i don't need to I'm always afraid these are tritium night sights. Uh, again, the, this is a law enforcement model. These aren't cheap, and so I don't like you know taking a, a punch or buying a special tool to get those out. And then if even if I did, I'd end up with a gap right in here, which I, I don't think I'd be happy with. That's really the only true, true um, downside to this gun. And I think if you were a thinner person, that really wouldn't even be a downside. The uh, slide stop, they they made a decision that they would make it a little bit uh, lighter and easier to get to, which means that you have that other problem. The paddle holster, again, you know, if you, if you go into it and, and you're willing to give something new a try, you'll end up liking it. Um, again, the ergonomics are just great. I think it's a great looking gun. I'll be honest, I got this one uh, when I was early on concealing carrying. Um, and again, as an educator, I, I can't take this to work with me. I can't have it in my car with me. So like, to, it was really hard to get onto that compliance of when I got home, putting this on, um, you know, going everywhere. And this helped me because this was just a good looking gun. Uh, the finish is great. The, it just, it looks nice, feels great in the hand. Uh, my instructor told me to do a lot of dry fire practice and this was an easy gun because I kind of always liked looking at it and enjoying it. So this is what I carry every single day. This is my uh, everyday carry or EDC. Again, this uh, Heckler & Koch VP9 SK is just an amazing firearm. And for anybody that's, that's thinking about picking up a uh, gun to conceal and carry, if you get an opportunity to shoot this gun, before you purchase your um, EDC, really take the time and pick this gun up, rent it, uh, take it to the, you know, shoot it at the range. Um, I think that you'll say to yourself, man, that I like that gun. I like the way it feels. Um, it's just a great gun. Um, I will tell you, this is the second one that I've had. Um, and this loaded chamber indicator back here either the paint falls off it isn't much of a benefit um i mean it doesn't hurt anything when it does fall off or the paint comes off um that is another another thing just to, to think about but again uh take this to the range shoot it enjoy it um and i i really think that you'll think about uh, picking this one up um thank you everybody for watching this video again um if you liked what you saw, go ahead and hit like, um, leave a comment. Uh, maybe if you'd like to see some other firearms or have some more uh, questions for me and subscribe. Thank you. This is The Bucket signing off.